Hey everybody, welcome back or uh, welcome to another episode of uh, Cocktails with the Critters. Um, this is a special edition. I mean, we do these once in a while. Um, Cocktails with the Critters is something else we do in addition to Coffee with the Critters. We only do cocktails with the critters once in a while. People like them. They're a lot of fun. Um, it's when I do a live stream later in the day. Um, <clears throat> and um, this one in particular, hey, Daphne. Hey, everybody. I'm starting to see people come in. Um, this one in particular, um, this is something new I'm doing where I'm inviting followers to come on screen with me. <laughs> And I know a lot of people don't really feel comfortable going on screen. I totally and completely understand that. Hey, Krista. Hey, Eva. I think I see Sarah. Um, I saw Daphne in here. Everybody's coming in. Um, hey, Bailey. Good to see you guys. So, yeah. Um, let me go ahead and introduce myself for people who may be joining that aren't familiar with who we are. My name is Laura Joseph, I'm owner of the Animal Behavior Center. We're an international educational center where we teach people all over the world um, how to empower the, their lives and the lives of their animals um, that they live or work with through using applied behavior analysis and positive reinforcement. We do that through our live streaming services. Um, yeah, so welcome. Anyways, hey, I've seen a lot. Yay. I see uh, Sandy, Joanne, Poppy, Pat, Julie. Um, yeah, so this one in particular, what I'm doing is asking people to, hey, Ray, jump on live with me. Um, and what I'll have to do, so anybody who wants to jump on live, just say, I will. What I have to do is get into Facebook and I'll send you a link that we have. We just tried this the other day and I have to send you a link through, copy it, I have to send you a link through Facebook Messenger. Um, I tried putting it on the screen the other day and it people couldn't get in. Um, so we will do things like this um, around the holidays, especially for people in our projects and our memberships. We're getting ready to do this in the Parrot Project and that's going to be huge. <laughs> we got a lot of people in there. So um, hey, Jill, I think I saw you in here. Well, did you join Coffee with the Critters last Sunday from North Wales? Yeah. Colette says, I won't. <laughs> it's okay. I get it. I understand. Um, on the rocks with the twist of lime, Pat. Yeah, there you go. Daphne says, I will. That'd be great, Daphne. Let me um, send you the link because Daphne is going to be a guest um, Daphne, you are. Um, I'm on your Facebook page right now, Daphne, and I just sent you the link. So when I send you the link, Daphne's going to be. Um, she's a professional dog trainer out of Washington. She is going to be joining us um, in a. Uh, live stream discussion here on Coffee with the Critters very soon. Um, just looking for anybody else that says I will. Jude Jensen from Utah. Pat, you need to come on here. Um, Jude, I'm on your Facebook page. Jude, sending you the link right now. Let's get on here and chat about whatever. Jude, there you go. Just sent you a link. Um, okay, Bailey, I can get four people on here at once. And then Jill Horwell, did you want to come on here or no? Um, let me get Bailey in here. You would come on with me or you will come on with me, ba or Bailey. Bailey, I'm on your Facebook page right now. In case you wanted to jump on, bam. I can only have... There's Daphne sitting in the lobby. Um, Daphne, if you can give me just one minute. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, I can only have four people on at a time, but this will make a great discussion. Um, I've never met Daphne before. Um, she's, But she's going to be on. Daphne, when is it? Two or three weeks? 
Well, I guess I'll ask you when I get you on here. Um, but let me go ahead real quick before we get started. I just wanted to run through a couple of things. Um, our Sam mugs are in for anybody that wants to purchase. Um, we have mugs made of all the animals. We're slowly accumulating them, but the Sam mugs just came in. If you are on our Facebook page, which you are right now, if you look to the left and you hit shop, you'll see um, his mug. A couple of things I just wanted to run through real quick from the awesome artist uh, Anna Garcia with Moonlit Inked does our mugs for us. This is the front of it and this is the back. And then um, we just had a live stream webinar. I think it was Thursday night. It was huge. Great. We did great. Um, big success. We recorded it and we will be uploading it to our website, theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. We have another one coming up. Um, we're going to reschedule it for the second week and Tuesday. So if you want to find out more about our webinars, you can find them on our website, which is theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. Um, and then um, we have, maybe you guys have seen some of our ads go out. Our holiday ads are out for people who may want to join our membership or our projects. It's immediate access to a huge library um, and also support at your fingertips all year long full of um, live streamed, uh, our live stream training and behavior and animal enrichment. And we also have a large podcast library. So with that being said, and while we wait for other people to join us, I am going to go ahead and ask Daphne to jump in here with us. I'm going to pull her on screen. You ready, Daphne? <laughs> and I've never met Daphne before. Three, two, one. There you are. <laughs> Hello. How are you? I'm good. Where's the cocktail? Oh, I'll have it right here. And I haven't even started speaking on it yet. I don't even. Uh, do you have one? No. <laughs> I just There's found this. What's that? Something's wrong with that. My cocktail. <laughs> well, you're what? Two or three hours behind us right now? Three, yeah. Three. So it's only two o'clock for you. But it's Sunday fun day. Yep. <laughs> well, good. Somewhere, right? right, right. Somewhere. It's it's Sunday. So um, nice to finally meet you. Yes. Yeah. Um, did you use Chrome as your browser? Yes. Okay. Yeah. For anybody wanting to join me, you do because Bailey just said you must use Chrome as your browser. Yep. It's best if you close all out of all other programs. Um, and use Chrome as your browser. Yes, and that's what you have to do to get on here with me. So was it hard for you to join, Daphne? Not at all. Did you have to download an app? Nope. Oh, you just, just clicked on the link. It opened up to your um, the program that you use, and that was about it. Great, great. Yeah. So you're coming on for a discussion on Coffee with the Critters in, what, two or three weeks, isn't it? Uh, it's at the very end of December. So maybe three, four weeks. Okay. So the last, probably the last Sunday in December. Yeah. Yep. yep. Great. And, um, I know Daphne, let's see, just make, make sure you have been on. I mean, I've seen you on coffee with the critters following for a couple, probably a couple of years, right? I was trying to figure out when I first started following you. It was before that you moved to the center. So before you moved to Sylvania. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because I remember, oh, cool. She's buying a, like a garden center. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wow. That's a long time. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So um, just bringing up discussion, what made you start following the work that we do here? It resonated with me. It's kind of the vein that I do, which is respecting animals and creating a bond and observing and listening and being mindful of your interaction. So everything that you talk about is like, yes, <laughs> yes, this is how animal training should be. Because um, obviously I'm a crossover trainer and the way that I learned to work with my own dogs or I used to be a horse trainer for a decade so the things that I did to horses and things that I did to dogs just something inside just said this this doesn't feel right it can't be right um, 
found a mentor. She's the one that turned me in, or guided me into positive reinforcement training. I went to the San Francisco Academy for Dog Trainers and that kind of launched the whole world opened up and I started learning about uh, ABA and all that type of stuff. Okay. So you are a crossover trainer. That's what you said? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I used to, I, I mean, before I did this, I wasn't a trainer. Um, but I used to use some old traditional methods with my my dog that I had put down a long time ago. I wish I would have known better then, you know. Um, but, hey, that's how we get here. Yep. Right. So a lot of dog trainers seem to be former horse trainers or it seems like horse trainers tend to cross over to getting into dog training. Yeah. Yeah. There's I mean, not, too much, not too much of a yes, they are different, but they're also very similar. Uh, I had a pretty bad uh, horse riding accident. Um, so uh, and then that's just at about the time I started competing with my Dobermans. So I kind of stepped away from the horse thing and then got into competing. Okay, so what is it that you do now, specifically? What I do now for private services, uh, basically teaching humans how to live harmoniously with their pets, mostly dogs. Uh, just kind of, again, sometimes normalize what dogs do as natural behavior. <laughs> Teaching this success, controlling the environment, um, basic. Now, as every family is different, I want to understand their lifestyle, so I teach them the behaviors that is most beneficial to them. So, some families don't want to learn door manners; it might not apply to them. They might not have a ton of people showing up. So, I really try to tailor um, what I teach depending on their lifestyle and what they need. So, cool, cool. Um, I see, okay, Jude's coming in. I see Therese Copawood is on here too. Therese, you should come up on here with us. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Um, something you were saying, I was going to, oh, yeah, like you were saying, hey, Jude, I'll bring you in in just a second. Um, you know, there's some things here that I don't train that a lot of people want to know, but I don't train it because. I don't need it, you know, um, but the importance is showing them how they can get it too, you know. Right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring Jude in. I've met Jude a couple of times. Here she comes. Three, two, one. Jude Jensen from Utah. Hey, Jude. Hey. How are you? I'm doing good. Good, Jude. This is Daphne. Daphne, this is Jude Jensen. Oh, there she is. Nice Hi. to meet you, Daphne. <laughs> yeah. So I met Jude, the first time I met you was in April, correct? Face to face, yeah. Yep, yep. yep. Um, out at um, Best Friends. Best Friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Daphne, I'm surprised you weren't there. I know. <laughs> in a year, I get it. In April, I think I was... I was traveling and I think I might've been in Oklahoma at that time. So didn't, didn't mesh up. Yeah. Yeah. So I met Jude out there and Jude, how did you find out about coffee with the critters? Well, I started looking to find out more about being a parent owner, a parrot owner and how I can better train and better enhance their lives. And, um, so I tripped upon you. I don't even know how, <laughs> but I started with Coffee with the Critters and then started joining into the projects once the project started up. Yeah, good, good. Thank you. So and it was great to finally meet you face to face in April. And then my uh, best friends asked me to come back out in August. So I got to get catch up with you again. That was nice. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and this is what I love about technology because we don't even necessarily have to meet face to face. It's nice if we do, but like Daphne, I've never met Daphne before till just 15 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I know Bailey, I think Bailey's trying to come in and Teresa's on here. Teresa Copawoto, I've known her for several years. 
Um, Trace, you should think about jumping on if you can. Um, so I'm just saying uh, Delia just posted individualized training is excellent. Feels like the work behavior analysts do with human clients. Yeah. And that's, um, that's how, I mean, I went back to school and started taking master's classes in applied behavior analysis um, because I started working with an animal that I knew nothing. Oh, I knew nothing about. And um, that was the parrot. Um, I'm going to send Therese Copa Copa to the link. He's trying to get I, in. I actually became a tag teach coach level one. Uh, gosh, it's almost been a year now. So tell me about tag teach, Daphne. I don't even really, I mean, I kind of get the concept, but I haven't really looked into it. It's just using an auditory marker. It's very similar to ABA. Um, knowing what criteria you want, how to shape desired behaviors, how to uh, structure uh, a preventative measure around unwanted behaviors. And it's pretty much letting the learner, you know, you give a brief explanation of what the criteria or the goal is. You let the learner explore and when they get the marker, Obviously, the marker gives information to the learner, and they're like, oh, it's when I feel this, or it's when I do this that I get it. And if they don't hear the marker, they keep self-assessing themselves and then try marker. Experiment with the environment to see what. <laughs> I'm going to have to look a little more into it. Um, hey, Katie, the um, what I've just read or learned about it was, um, oh, what happened to Daphne? <laughs> um, Daphne, just let me know when you're ready to jump back in. I'll see you coming into the lobby. Um, there she is. So what happens if you're not um, hardwired? I have to hardwire or the show won't happen um, if you're not hardwired. And I don't think, Daphne, I can tell you're not, correct? You're just on your Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Eva just said, Daphne disappeared, Laurel. So, um, no, what I've read about Tag Teach, I mean, I've kind of, I've heard about it, um, but I've read about it being primary, not primarily, but um, like um, teaching calm or calming down a horse is where I've heard about it mm -hmm. and working with children. Tellington Touch, are you getting Tellington Touch? I think I am getting it confused. Because so Tellington I Touch. So I developed Tellington Touch, which was kind of like a massage technique. Okay. Uh, tag Teach is using an auditory marker. Okay. Okay. All right. I guess I need to go back and do a little more research. <laughs> um, okay. So Shelly's on here too. Hey, Shelly, let me know if you want to join too. I know Trace is trying to get in here right now and we'll have the four of us on here. And um, yeah, Delia says um, you can use tag teach with athletes, dan dancers, etc. Interesting. So it sounds like it's just shaping with a marker. Anything that we're development, you can certainly use tag teach. And they use it a lot with our autistic children. Okay. Okay. Yep. That's where I think I've been hearing about it. Okay. Therese is coming in here with us. Therese Copawoda, I'm bringing her on in three, two, one. There she is. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Please. So, Therese, Therese, this is Jude and um, Daphne. For those of you that don't know, let's see, Coffee with the Critters this March will be four years old. Um, and I know Therese, wow, I've known Therese for what, two, three, three years? Three years? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah. Since Periscope started. Yeah. That's when I think I, I, think I met you. Yeah. 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 Okay, Periscope. We met through, oh, I'm not showing my name. Um, we met through um, Periscope. Anybody remember those days where I was live and live streaming through Periscope? 
<laughs> um, yeah. and I just said, you know, I think I'm going to go do Facebook Live. Yeah. And I Facebook, think that was a good move. I think so. Yeah. Facebook Live wasn't very good at that time, but man, has it changed. Yeah. It had just been getting started. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Therese um, also, you uh, ran Petscope TV. Mm -hmm. That was fun. Right. That was, that was, it was a, it was a fun, fun experiment and just uh, a good way to get used to live video that in the pet lovers tribe. That's right. Do you do the pet lovers tribe still or no? no? No, I think, I think most people started coming over here. So it kind of, it kind of fizzled. Yeah. And before it just totally died out. I put an end to it, figured, you know, go out while, while everybody was still happy. <laughs> yep. So um, Teresa and I met through live streaming. I think we, I can't remember all the details, but we kind of stumbled on each other through our mutual love for animals. Um, and then we hooked up and started doing the Petscope TV together. And I know you've been here to the center once, yeah. you know, one of the events. And um, now we still stay in very close contact. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> and I'll let you just decide if you want to say any more than that. But uh, oh, that's up to you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Teresa does some um, does some work for the Animal Behavior Center. Um, all of our posts on Instagram. Teresa has um, a company called the Social Media Hound, and um, she does a lot of. Uh, well, you tell Teresa. Yeah, I do. I help people with their social media and uh, um, help people with live stream and build websites for people. And I am super, super happy to be the one that's posted on Instagram for Laura. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So um, if Lou was on here, um, Lou has been trying to teach me how to use Instagram, but I'm just so busy and I'm used to Facebook. And Lou's like, you need to get over to Instagram. And I'm like, I can't. So she's been trying to teach me behind the scenes. So I was just like, one day I'm just like, hello, Therese, remember me? <laughs> <laughs> Are you still doing work? And at the time you're like, Laura, I'm so busy. And you were, you know, going through your move and all of that. Mm -hmm. And then she agreed to take me on. And I'm loving it. Yeah. And I still want to get out there because I think I personally need to take a bunch of pictures. <laughs> sure. <Of> those animals. <laughs> <laughs> You're always welcome here, Therese. And um, I actually am thinking about making a trip to Indianapolis soon, too. Oh, are you? Oh, should I have not have said where you live? <laughs> I mean, I would go to Indianapolis to uh, hear you guys have Maybe some I can meet you. Actually, I don't live in Indianapolis. I live in a little town north, east of there. <laughs> north in east. Pendleton. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so that's fine. That's fine. Okay. It's on, yeah. it's on my profile, so you can see where I live. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Good. Sometimes I say things. I'm like, "Whoops, we're live." Oh, cool. We shouldn't have said that. <laughs> yeah. Let me know when. We'll have to get okay. together. Yeah, I'm planning on coming out before probably this spring. Um, I'll be in Chicago in a couple of weeks, and then January we're planning on going out to Vegas, and then February I've got a big two-day workshop in Montreal. So I'm probably oh. more. Yeah, I know. February <laughs> in Montreal. I, I know. <laughs> It's like going to Key West in July. Right. Well, you did that, didn't you? A long time ago. <laughs> I wouldn't do that again. Hey, Daphne, if you can hear us, you froze. Okay, there she's back. Cool. I'm just, I was saying, don't forget, I speak French. Oh, that's right. You asked me if I needed a translator. <laughs> you might want one, Laura. Yeah, I know. They sent me the link of uh, where to go for a hotel, and I'm going to have to take the subway, and I'm going, oh, dear. Oh, no. Um, yeah, and oh, I, wow. you know I speak nothing else but English, and they're like, well, um, that should be okay, and I was like, that's not making me feel too good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm Canadian, and, um, that's right, dude. and yep. I grew up in Ontario, and I know you don't go to go go into Quebec unless you know how to speak French or you've got somebody that can speak it because it's that pretty tough to get around. Good. Yeah, you're not making me feel too comfortable, Jude. I've been to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not much help. <laughs> Canada's 50 minutes north of me, so. <laughs> 
Um, Joanne says, when are you coming to the UK, Laura? I'll come as soon as you am invited. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I don't know. Well, let's talk about something. Um, it's the four of us in here. I don't see anybody else. I'm not sure what happened to Bailey. Um, and Shelly's outside filling horse tanks, so she can't jump on. Um, anybody wants to jump on, let me know. I'll send you a link. But otherwise, let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, some of the things we're talking about, I was just going to talk about a certain topic. Um, one thing I want to get on here on Coffee with the Critters, which I think, but I'm going to research my people very wisely, um, is I want to get in, I would like to get a couple of, I want to get different perspectives from people who can think on um, educating and doing better, but I do want to bring in um, I'm hesitating on saying it because I know people are going to be like, what? But we don't learn from always agreeing with each other. You know what I mean? And I mm -hmm. say we don't learn from easy. Um, I have had a couple of discussions about this topic, and it's talking about um, how can we do better in the animal community? Um, where do the problems lie? And I want to get in a couple of breeders and a couple of people from shelters. And discuss this mm -hmm. yeah and that I've got could be an interesting yeah. interesting talk i think it would be very interesting and um you know the problem with animals losing their home is not black and white you know most of the animals here at the center that i have have lost their home but not all of them i've i've, I've purchased a few as well um so anyways i just think that would be great because you know, people do a lot of pointing fingers as you're the reason why animals lose their home. And then people are pointing the other way saying you're the reason why animals are losing their home. And Krista says, excellent. She said, uh, we need to work together. And that's exactly what we do. We need to do. Um, yeah, Katie says she, uh, she thinks it'd be fabulous. She's seen both, she's seen both sides of the debate. Um, and I work a lot, um, I work a lot with everything, everybody. But I think, you know, the common denominator there is education. That's me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think that would, I, I, I would watch that. <laughs> I would watch that interview, that talk. I think it would be a great way to um, let people hear the different, the different ideas and decide for themselves what they believe. Sure. You know, when they get the when they get the real information, just take the information and use it, use it how you want it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so great. Yeah. A um, couple other things. I know some of the things we're discussing, like it is the holidays. That's why we're having this episode. Um, um, and I just wanted to bring different people on. So, I mean, People who watch Coffee with the Critters are used to seeing my face and hear my annoying voice all the time. I wanted to see you guys. You know? <laughs> Our annoying voices, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wanted to hear your annoying voices. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, the holidays bring a lot. I was just talking to my brother-in-law about this this morning, how the holidays are very stressful for people. And I'm just like, I will not let it be stressful. I just don't let it be stressful. Mm -hmm. I don't give gifts. Um, and obviously, the older you get, I mean, I the more I appreciate just time with people. But um, one of the things we're talking about is uh, what is stressful for me around the holidays is when family comes over. I can't wait to see them, but they're all getting ready to untrain everything I've been training for the next last year. <laughs> Um, sabotage. What's that? Sabotage. Yeah, I still didn't understand what you said. You're kind of cutting in and out, Daphne. Sorry. Um, but sabotage. Oh, sabotage. sabotage. Um, one thing we talk about is <laughs> uh, make it very easy. This is what I do. 
it, there's things I don't want people doing, such as feeding my animals at the table, um, going over and reinforcing a scream or um, a, a scream from a parrot, not from my family members. Um, a Thanks growl. for clarifying <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Talk about not having the holidays be stressful. Um, but one thing I do is make it um, very, you always hear me say pe people or animals learn faster from being reinforced for what to do versus what not to do. I use the same thing with my family. Um, mm -hmm. I, instead of telling them what I don't want them to do, number one, I'll just inform. Number two, make it so easy. I'll get certain behaviors trained. Um, before my family gets there and then make it so super easy for the family to pick up and do the training. Such as, I mean, one Christmas we had Milo the pig um, in our kitchen and I just took a bowl of Cheerios, set it right on the bar in the kitchen and I said, you want to see something really fun? Ask Milo to go to his station. And we went through a half a box of Cheerios, but <laughs> at least Milo stayed on his station the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> oh so um how was milo's favorite christmas by the way <laughs> that was milo's favorite christmas lots of cheerios yes so um i wanted to um let's see anything else we want to talk about because if shelly or katie um eva anybody does anybody else want to jump in here just somebody say I do, and I'll bring you on here. Um, Carrie says, Laura, the Harrisburg PA Bird Club is looking for speakers for 2019. Yeah, Carrie, have them get in touch with me. Um, Pat, the awesome Pat Anderson, says another good future topic would be difference between the perspectives of animal rights versus animal welfare. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to write that one down, Pat, because um, there is a big difference between the two. That would be that would be an interesting talk. Yeah. Um, inform the people. Yeah, because a lot of times people um, donate um, to places that they really may not be sure exactly sure where they're donating to. You know what exactly does? Yeah, Pat says there's so much confusion. Um, so Shelly's going to jump on here with us. Um, let me jump on Shelly's Facebook page and send her the link. I'll pop off real quick so she can come in. Before I do, though, I just want to show you my, my Christmas tree right behind me. Hey. That's, my, that's my, my coat tree, and I wanted to have a tree, but Jed's getting, Jed's getting some... Um, uh, canine cognitive disorder he was just diagnosed and I was so afraid if I got a tree he might pee on it but he's never peed on my coat tree so I figured I'd put lights on that <laughs> <laughs> that's cute Jed is um, Teresa's border collie um, what does he have what has he been diagnosed canine with canine cognitive disorder doggy Alzheimer's Aww. yeah so. okay but he's he's doing pretty good right now. He's pacing because I'm talking on 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 camera, so he gets a little. I can see him in the background. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll jump off so that Shelly can come on, and I just want to tell everybody Merry Christmas. Thanks for having me on, Laura. Hey, thanks, Therese. And um, yeah, Therese is the face behind all the Instagram posts, and she's rocking it. <laughs> see you guys later. Have fun. See you, Therese. Um. Yeah, um, Pat says, always donate to your local shelter before national organization unless you know for certain what they stand for. And um, it, it's for that reason I, I don't refer, I will not refer anybody to someplace unless I have been there and seen it for myself um, and have talked to the people that, you know what I mean? Um, that's why I do go and visit a lot of rescues. I want to see it for myself and talk to the people. What do you stand for? Before I recommend anybody, or oh, if you want to adopt or if you want to buy whatever, um, give out re referrals. I won't. I won't recommend anybody unless I've seen it for myself. 
Um, yeah, because um, there was a time in the past where I have recommended because the place was really big. Um, they did a lot of social media. But then when I went out there, I was just like, oh, my gosh. Um, this is and then I just felt gut wrenching because I had been referring people there. Um, Hey, Dawn. Dawn Graham's on here, too. So, Katie Sislow. Um, Katie, I'm jumping on your Facebook page real quick. And sending her the link. <clears throat> um, yeah, so in this episode, and you guys, if you guys want to talk about something, um, Jude and Daphne, feel free to interrupt, interrupt me. Um, Shelly says, send it again. So I'm going to send her link again. Um, so yeah, don't forget, um, Daphne's gonna be on with me in a couple of weeks, the end of the month. Right. Daphne, I think we're losing you, you're froze. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, okay, so Dawn Graham's on. Yeah. Um, sorry, Daphne. I think it's just due to the Wi-Fi. We've got a bad connection. Um, so anyways. Um, well, I've got something I'd like to, to ask you about, Laura. Sure, go ahead. So when you've brought like new birds into like cocoa, um, have it been fed chop and vegetables probably beforehand? How do you get them on to a changeover in diet? I have a, a real stickler of a bird that will not change over to anything. Okay. Hey guys, I see a couple people down in the lobby. Um, Hey Daphne, can, real quick. Um, Daphne, do you care if, since we're losing you, do you care if um, you jump out and I'll be in touch with you before we go live? It was great meeting you. Um, what I do, I do that quite a bit here. Um, I do it differently from if it's um, pending on if it's a, a bird or a mammal, but with the birds, I do um, a lot of times, especially with rehome, you've got to start with whatever they already know. So if they're eating junk, you, me personally, what I do is I keep feeding them junk while I slowly add in um, more nutritional. And it's, I mean, Jude, it's not necessarily fast. You know, depending on the history of reinforcement, how old that animal is. Um, some of these birds you can get in, they're 35 years old. They're on junk food diet. Um, I just slowly add in what I want them to be on. And it may take three months. It may take six months. It may take two years. And then I just slowly change them over. But I will tell you, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that unless that's in the parrot project because it needs to be follow up with continuing education. Okay. Um, does that make sense, Jude? Yeah, yeah, it does. I mean, we're, okay. we're, we're persistent with putting the vegetables and the fruit and so forth in their bowls. And um, this one, she'll just like throw everything out till she gets just to the pellets. And that's all she wants. Okay. Well, um, and you've heard Patricia Sund and uh, Jason Crean say this as well. When you feed them something like chop, it's so tiny that it sticks to the pellets and they have to, they're starting to ingest some of that. And I'm always experimenting. Mm -hmm. I don't care with what animal. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring Shelly in and Katie. Um, I don't care what animal. Um, I already forgot what I was saying because I'm focused on Shelly and Katie. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, those of you that may be new, um, I know, well, I'll just, I'll introduce both of these from bottom left. If it's showing up the same as it is on my screen, Katie Sislow, she's a professional, professional dog trainer, correct, Katie? Sure. 
That works. <laughs> I know you, you um, work and compete with them as well, right? I do. I do. Yeah. And I've done some, some professional, I guess it's kind of my professional hobby. So. Okay. You're a dog trainer. I, I don't do it. I don't, yeah, I don't do it for a living, but. Okay. Uh, Wisconsin. Yeah. Yep. And you were recently on a coffee with the critters with me. Mm-hmm. And you just went live with me yesterday in level one. I did. <laughs> I kind of. I can't get enough of you, Laura. You. Huh? I can't get enough of you. <laughs> and Katie's been <laughs> extremely active in level one with her dog, Ty, when we're talking about. What were we talking about? Oh, we were talking about the importance of target training and using a target to get an animal to push an object on you. And you were mm-hmm. and I had her push I had her push a door. I sh- had taught her to shut the cupboard door. Yeah. Well, we had a lot of fun with that because we had dogs in there. Um, we had parrots in there. Um, some of the other somebody didn't somebody do something with that's right, Sean Whaley with her cat. Um, that that rocked. That was fun. Mm-hmm. So then we have Shelly Hotchstetler here on the right. Um, do you live in Michigan or Indiana, Shelly? You're in Michigan, right? Michigan, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're, and, right, we're right on the line, literally. Okay. And she's here with um, Preston, her recently adopted umbrella cockatoo that is completely blind, correct, Shelly? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And actually, he has his one eye is going to be removed Thursday. Oh, good. Good. Hopefully, that'll alleviate any um, undiagnosed pain. So, um, okay, yeah. And then, um, Katie, how did you find out about Call with the Critters? I know you've. I think it actually showed up on my Facebook page one time that you were live and I just went, "Hmm, what is this? And went to it. And then I started coming on every week and just progressively it became my Sunday mornings. Oh, good. Good. Which is why I like once in a while, I like to do this on Saturday night because some people can't join every Sunday morning. Usually in the evenings, we do get a pretty decent um, attendance. Um, and then Shelly, how did you find out about crop? Is that how you found out about us with sweet coffee with the critters? Oh, shoot. I don't even know. I think Carrie told me about you. Carrie. That has nature's inspiration cages. Oh, Carrie Noterman. Yeah. I think she told me about you. And then of course I started with coffee with the critters because it's free. And yeah, worked my way. Yeah. yeah. Just like yeah. he just worked his way. You see how he did that? Yeah. <laughs> He's supposed to be getting down. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, hey, Debbie Goodrich is on here. Nancy's on here. Anna Garcia, we were talking about you at the beginning. Um, Anna says, I love Shirley Hotchkeller. <laughs> 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 so, um, yeah, we were talking about. Uh, Anna, at the beginning, she is the artist that we use for a lot of our work here at the Animal Behavior Center. And she is with Moonlit Ink, and she rocks. And I'm seeing, like, we've been using her for a couple of years, I believe, and I've been seeing on Facebook different people using her, hiring her work for um, portraits of the animals. Mm -hmm. So you can find it here on Facebook. So what do you guys um, what do you guys want to talk about? Anything in particular? No, just coming on to hang out and say hey. Okay, I guess so. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know what's really cool? Um, in like we were, I was talking about when we started coffee with the critters. We started with um, um, on per- on periscope and. Um, the, I, what I do here, because I know we get a wide variety of people. Um, we work with a lot of different species of animals, and we do that on purpose. 
Um, hey, Laura, so, go ahead and bump, bump me off real quick. Okay, I see it. Got it. Trisha, I'm a little from Preston. Um, so the reason I work with a lot of different animals, um, many of my friends are professional dog trainers like Daphne, Katie. You guys have seen Deb Jones. I'm surprised she's not on here tonight. Um, I have a lot of friends that do fabulous work in the dog community. Um, I like to focus on, but not limited to, I like to focus on working with exotics because um, usually they're not as resilient and um, exotics as far as, you know, even with zoo animals, because they can do a lot of damage real fast. You, you, some people may be able to, um, get a dog to sit on cue by using some negative reinforcement and positive punishment. Um, not really going to, you might be able to do that once with some of the animals I work with, but they're, I mean, um, they're going to be quick to show that nah, you're going to see all the side effects of using positive punishment, um, using aversives to control behavior, and you're going to see them real fast. Um, and it's one of the primary reasons, you know, um, that's why here at the center, control is not a bad word. We all have to keep control over our animals. That's why a lot of people are like, oh, can I just stop in and visit? And I was like, no, no, this can be a very dangerous place for somebody to be. That's why the doors are locked at all times. That's why we like to do our services via live streams. Um, because a lot of times, and Katie, tell me if you see this, like, um, when I used to go into people's home and do consultations, I prefer my consultations online because when I walk in your house, your parrot, your dog, whatever may act totally different than when I'm not in the house. But if I can see what it's doing over your shoulder, that's when I get to see a good read on baseline behavior. Um, I haven't ever actually done any online. I've done via phone conference conversations and those are really hard because you're you have someone who obviously is struggling with a behavior which means that they don't actually understand what's going on and they're trying to explain this behavior and you're trying to educate them on how to work with the behavior um and they're like oh okay and then it never goes anywhere because they don't understand it um i did that a lot with rescue and that was really a struggle um when I went into to houses too, I mean, you're right in the sense that, you know, you're, you're not normally there. So they do behave differently just because, you know, and they're like, well, he doesn't always do this, but this is what he does do. And so, you know, you're kind of making your presence known and then you're getting a behavior with yourself in that moment, I guess, that, you know, you're kind of teaching the owner how to deal with the behavior. But then when you're gone, the dog may not behave the same way. Um, and then the owner doesn't know what to do about it because you're not there to support them. Yeah. So um, I could see the how, you know, like an online type thing would be, would be good as long as you can get all of the angles of, I guess, what's going on, but it's not something I've ever experienced. Yeah. And that's why Katie, that's why I created the memberships because what I used to charge for a consultation, I would not do just one consultation um, and Daphne, let me know if you want me to bring you back into this discussion. You want to? I'd like to hear your input on this as well. Um, this is Daphne, uh, the dog trainer out in Washington that was on here with us earlier. So um, that's why I created the memberships. I used to do the consultations. I would not do one. I would not do one because I am not there for the follow-up and for the questions. And that's one consultation. We're just getting started. But what I used to charge for four, I would do four and no less than four, was not in everybody's budget. So that's why I did, I'm like, there's got to be a better way to do this. One of my clients is in Mexico. He kept coming back to me and he would pay $450 each time. And I was just like, this is ridiculous. I can't, I feel guilty charging you this over and over again. So I started the memberships. Whereas if I can count on, you know, not the more people, join the less I can bring that price down and now I have you for a whole year and that's 
<laughs> and that's kind of an interesting thought on it too, because I feel like for myself, I almost undersell myself just because I want to be able to support those people. And then you kind of get this back and forth with yourself of, well, you're doing a good thing for the animal. You're doing it for the animal. But then what am I really getting out of it? And is it really worth it to me to be doing it? And so you get kind of this back and forth with myself of, do I really have, you know, is this something that I want to be doing? Or is this something, you know, I guess this, this back and forth of, um, is it worthwhile to me to be supporting and helping these people? And then, you, like you said, if you don't do multiple um, sessions of it, where are you really getting with it? And a lot of times I had people that I would get pushback of, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll contact you. You know, we'll get back to you and we'll set something else up. And then, you know, you get, oh, no, they're doing fine. Or, you know, you kind of check back in and, you know, you don't necessarily get that. So it's nice to get that that payment, I guess, up front that, look, you just paid me for three sessions. So for the next three sessions, you're stuck with me. Um, you know, but then do you undersell yourself just to make sure that you're supporting that animal or not? Yep. Go ahead, Daphne. Okay, Horshack. Horshack. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is a, an evolution you go through as a business owner trying to figure out how you can best serve people. And I've been in the same boat. I've learned a way to kind of filter the clients that I want to work with. One, I pour so much of my self solutions for them and I truly want to find solutions for the family. And my specialty was dog aggression. So not only trying to find solutions, trying to find some management protocols, but then I would go home and take that with me and emotionally it would stay with me for all night and days afterward and all that. So it's quite, you know, it's quite a thing doing behavior consults and trying to really help a family, again, live coherent with an animal that may have some behavior issues. So yeah. one, I, I started offering an office, uh, a service called Meet the Trainer. And first I asked them, I said, well, how do you find me? Did you go to my website? Hint, hint. Did you read about who I am and what I do? Um, if they say no, I said, okay, perfect. I have this service called Meet the Trainer. It's at a discounted price. I come to you. You get to see how I work with you and your animals. And then you can decide if you want to invest in me to help you. Um, so that is a service not a lot of dog trainers offer in my area. People are just kind of cherry picking saying, oh, his website looks good or you know, I prefer people that use shock collars or whatever it is and just go with it. Um, but this method is, you know, it's a discounted price. I come to you, you get to meet me, and you can either let me or not. That's fine. I don't have to say for the world. Um, but when it comes to behavior problems, I'm pretty upfront telling people there's no quick fix. This is going to be a journey, and I'll do the best that I can to give you solutions. Um, and it's my one time deal. That one behavior consult, I usually tell them, this is for me to gather as much information as I can to give you some type of short-term management. And if you want to continue from there, you'll have to invest in a few more sessions to really get the journey going. So I try to make it as blunt as as real as your expectations from the get-go. Yeah. Um, we there's yeah um something i was gonna say jude do you mind if i we can only have four people on here at moments i want to get yeah. shelly hotstetler back in here shelly you want to come yeah, back i don't dog train so i think it'd be great for me to step out no no um no worries jude i appreciate you coming on here thank you all righty good to bye, see jude. you bye so i'm gonna bring shelly in um one thing I was going to say, what we were just talking about, Daphne, you just said something, and I was just like, bam, that's it. Um, I need to know people are serious. Then I will work with you. I don't take on just everybody. I will ask you a few key questions, and that's how I determine if you're serious or not. Because in order to change some of these behaviors, you're going to have to be in it for the long haul. And um, 
like here's something in Daphne and Katie, I wanted to get your input on this too. I agreed recently to take on um, an in-home dog consultation, which I rarely do anymore because I just don't like to leave the place. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I told him, you know, this is not going to be a quick fix. This is what I walked into. <clears throat> I agreed to, to work with him. I walked into a, I'd say, 70-year-old man with a seven-month-old giant schnauzer puppy. Oh. And he said he had <laughs> schnauzers his whole life. And I'm watching, and I'm looking at this, and I'm just like, okay. And I'm just, I mean, I felt bad for guy, the guy because he has secluded himself in a, with his dog in a certain area of his house. So, so the dog doesn't wreck the house. Now, insert any animal here. You know what I mean? But um, then I was just like, oh my goodness, how do I, how do I go? Oh, like Deb Jones had said one time, they want a solution, not a project. Correct. And I'm sitting here looking, and he's like, but I've had giant schnauzers my whole life, and I'm like. Yeah, but your life has changed over the past three to four schnauzers you've had. And I'm looking at him going, how do I possibly give this guy the information he's going to need continuing support? And how do you and, help him come? How do you how do you help him be able to apply that information to like, I mean, if he's 70 years old and he's had to seclude himself, now this is generalization of a 70 year old, maybe I shouldn't do that. But how are you gonna help him apply that to this super excitable puppy that's putting him at physical risk of injuring himself and set them both up for success? That's hard. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not gonna sit here and explain to you a bridge, a target. Timing is important, you know what I mean? So I just sat there and I'm just like, all right. So say my dad just got a giant snotter puppy. <laughs> you know, I talked a lot about enrichment, keeping his mind, keep, keeping the dog's mind occupied, you know, and a couple of very easy to do behaviors he could train. But I walked out of there. I was kind of Go ahead, Daphne. Oh, kind of the same boat. I had an four-year-old veterinarian who's had pit bulls all his life who has a three-year-old pit bull that is jumping at her skin because she doesn't get enough enrichment. So I'm kind of in the same pit of goat thing. Yeah. Um, I think this was in, in level two, we do a lot of book reviews. We do a lot of things. We do a lot of talks like this about um, professionals. For professionals but um we did a recent book review and we were talking about this was this really opened my eyes and i was like so true um the author was talking about how she goes into clients houses and they're like yes but i've had this type of dog my whole life now i mean we've had dogs like this all our lives and now all of a sudden we have a very fearful uh, Shelty. I don't know. I don't remember what she was talking about. And then I'm like, the author was like, but your life has changed. Your kids are up and out of the house. And now it's just you and your husband and your dog's going, you know, very fearful in the book. When the, uh, it was a German <laughs> shepherd, Laura. Was it? Okay. Yeah, okay. It was German shepherds. Okay. Yeah. Shelly's in her level too. Um, but yeah, when she said that, I was like, oh, so true. You know, your life has changed. Your lifestyle, how you live that has changed so much over the years. You know, I um, find, go ahead. Sorry. No. I find it really interesting. I hear a lot of, too, I grew up with these dogs. And yet it's their first dog after they've grown out up, like they're on their own. And of that breed and they're like but this isn't what it was like when I was a kid and it's like well you know the parents train the dog or you know you get all these other investments into this dog and all of a sudden these people are out on their own with these dogs and they don't know how to manage it 
Whereas in the house with all the kids, the dog was getting a lot of socialization. And right. Because you had kids and you had commotion and you had, you know, if if parents were at work, the kids were home from school or, you know, there was always some sort of enrichment potentially happening within that household that allowed it to be successful there. And now you've got, you know, whether it be a single person or a couple or, a you know, a couple with a small child, it's not the same as growing up you know, as a teenager, you know, having teenagers or whatnot in the house that are, you know, young adults that can entertain the dog, that it always had someone to go to. Sure. Uh, having a shelter in a house with, maybe, let me find a different animal. Having a bulldog in a house, <laughs> um, growing up um, with a bunch of kids around, and then now all of a sudden you're in college and living on your own and you get a bulldog puppy and wondering why the bulldog's acting. Maybe that's, that's the right. <laughs> it's all about the individual animal, regardless. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, Shelly, you have anything to say? Or are you just oh. staring at your beautiful birds? I'm staring at my beautiful birds. Um, and I guess I, I really wanted to comment and I went and got Quincy because, you know, he's, he's a hardcore mutilator. One spot on his chest. Um, he's had surgery. I've done everything, you know, and still continue to do stuff. Uh, but this, this is what I got from Julie that I had told you I wanted to talk about in the parrot project. Mm -hmm. And I really think this thing is going to work. I mean, this bird tears up everything. I could spend 80 bucks and he'll have it destroyed in 10 minutes. Yeah. And some of the concern with the difference in types of animals we're working with Daphne and Katie, Katie, you know, you have a bird. Um, we're talking about history of reinforcement here. How old is Quincy? He is 27. Are you 27? He's 27. Can you imagine working with a 27-year-old dog? You know what I mean? My concern there with the parrots, and I can see some of the comments. I'm trying to watch some of the comments. We're talking about, um, and I know Dawn's talking about it, Carrie, I think Tim, and so, Eva, somebody else had brought up the, the question. Um, is an animal too old to be worked with? No. Um, no, you can teach, teach an old dog new tricks. You've got a 27 year old bird right there that's mutilating its chest. Um, the history of reinforcement. The only thing you can't teach is a husband, which is why I want to <laughs> <it> by Preston. <laughs> oh, yes. Not going to say I agree, but you get a big laugh out of me because I, I laugh at what I can correlate with. I think the can't teach the old dog new tricks kind of thing. The hard part about doing it, though, is that there's already all those previous behaviors that are learned. So you're actually kind of untraining or like in training the situation. He's learned how to do it. And it whatever be the reason, he feels the need to keep doing it. Where when you have something that a younger critter you're teaching those behaviors that they've never learned. And I think that's that's the key with old versus young is that you, you're you working with learn behavior versus teaching that behavior to be learned in the first place. That's why you try to prevent it. I mean, one of the, Daphne, feel free to jump in, but one of the best key points of information is keep your eye on the behavior. If you think a behavior issue, don't wait for it to start happening prevent it from even getting there because once it happens now you have to counter condition not that you can't change it because where do I go with this um, not that you can't change it because you can but now the animal has already learned a and a is an undesired behavior you can train with B instead but if B stops if reinforcers stop being delivered for B, a is more likely to go back and start happening again. That's my concern with counter conditioning. Prevent it from even happening in the first place. Um, because once it starts happening, it's likely to regress. 
I think Daphne's trying to come in. Daphne, you're freezing again. Oh, no. Okay, this is okay. I see all you. You hear me? You hear me now? Okay. So I think what you just said comes a lot with wisdom for us to understand and observe. Oh, no, I don't want him going down planning. Daphne, you're really breaking up. Yeah. Darn it, I really wanted to hear what she had to say, too. <laughs> Me, too. Yeah. Um, Daphne, you're really I, breaking yes. up. Feel free to come type it in the comments if you can. I've got something to throw in here that I think it ties in. Um, you know, we're talking about counter conditioning. And I also think it's important to not have everything set in our head. Like our dog needs to do this, this, or this. I, I mean, there has to be compromises. Look at me with Savannah. You know, I've, I've got a wild animal living in a domestic situation. Is it ideal? Does she do everything that a dog does? No. But I don't expect her to. So I think not a dog. They get, some people get this picture in their head. And they're not willing to accept anything else. Anything less than that. And they just think they got a defective dog. They toss it to the curb and want to start over. I think that's a hard thing, though, especially maybe not so much. I don't know, maybe in birds. I'm not super familiar with that aspect of it. But I think in dogs, too, a lot of um, I find a lot of frustration in that this is the expectation. I am the master and this is what needs to happen. And how. My goal, I guess, I, I totally agree with you, Shelly, but I think the hard part is, is trying to get it so that this is what the owner's expectation is. And that's how can we get that dog to that point that they can live there harmoniously without that owner being frustrated with that. And I don't know, it's, it's, that's a hard thing because people just have these expectations that that dog needs to do backflips because they say so. And it's so hard to meet that expectation. That's why they, they just need to get a coyote. Trust me, their expectation level will change. Like I was <laughs> excited when I got her to not mark the bed. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd be exciting. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, and I think a lot of the um, problem comes through media, different forms of media, past and current. Um, uh, yes. I've, you know, I've, I've heard it called disney Is that what a lot of people say with the dogs? There's expectations when people forget your people have this image in their head of what their animals should be doing. And what they tend to forget is this is the animal. This is an animal. You know what I mean? Um, it doesn't necessarily, what they have in their head is what they see in the movies, what they see on TV. And right. they want that without see. any work towards it, generalizing again. But, you know, well, this is what it should be doing, and I don't know how to make it get there. So move it on, carry on, be frustrated, don't train it, just expect it. Yep. And I think what... Maybe I'm wrong, but I've had years to think about this, and there's several things in my mind I always contemplate and think about over the years, but what it all comes down to is education. Mm -hmm. You know? Definitely. So, well, And I don't think people realize when they watch these movies with animals, it's generally not one animal. It can be four, five, six different animals that has a specialty in one area, but it's not the same animal doing all of the tricks and all that. I mean, so yeah, people just get the wrong expectations of how it should be. Yeah. Let's, let's do this. Daphne just sent me a message saying she's got to run. 
Okay. Yep, I saw it pop up on my screen. Daphne, thank you so much for joining. Um, I'll be in touch with you very soon, okay? And happy holidays. Um, if you guys don't mind staying on here with me, I wanted to address, let's address one more question and then we'll call it quits for the night. Does that sound good? Sure. sure. Um, Sunday night is my date night with my husband. Well, every night is. Um, <laughs> there's a whole conversation going on behind the scenes while we're talking. And I love seeing that. Um, there's some avid followers that are talking about this and some are members in the Parrot Project and our memberships. So I want to bring this up um, from another avid follower, which is Tim Sparks. So I'm going to hide our names so we can see this question real quick. I haven't been able to keep up with the conversation, but I trust the people that are in there. So Laura, do, what is your feeling? Does the amount of the time the behavior has been happening really matter? And let's all discuss this. Number one, it depends on the individual animal. But in something I always say, the longer, this is just in my experience, the longer an undesired behavior has happened, the longer it takes usually to counter condition but usually not near as long as it took for the animal to learn the behavior in the first place. Yeah, and I think it becomes a default as well. It, if they've got a behavior that they've done a long time and you condition away from it, if something goes wrong or you stop doing what you were doing, it's pretty easy for them to default back to that old behavior. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something I just, I try to catch myself on all the time. If I see something not quite right, I don't look at the animal and say, what are you, why are you doing this? I look at myself and I'm like, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> because obviously if they're going backwards, then I'm screwing up. Yeah. Katie? I think the longer that, it, you know, like you said, it's, um, I forgot what you said. No, I lost my train of thought. Um, so the longer the undesired behavior happens, uh, Tim had asked, does the amount of time the behavior has been happening really matter as far um, as being able to change the behavior? Yeah. And you had said it depends on the amount of time. And I think it also depends on what the specific behavior is, if I'm remembering where I was going with this. Um you know, is it something and why are they doing it? Are they doing it because they're bored or have they been doing it for five years because they're not getting the enrichment that they need? Are they doing it because they're fearful of a specific situation that occurs? Um, you know, and if you're if you're getting over, you know, all of a sudden you're giving them the enrichment that they need. The chance of them going back to that behavior is a lot less. Um, if you're dealing, dealing with fearful and you are able to counter condition to get over that fear in that specific environment, are they going to go back to that behavior because they're no longer fearful? So I think it does depend on not only the amount of time that they've been doing it, but what the specific behavior is um, and the reason behind why they're doing the specific behavior. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's really key about identifying what the reinforcer is behind the behavior because you just said if it's actually fear, if that fear, if, if it can be just removing the feared object, boom, if that's all it is, you know? Um, so good, thank you. Well, it's a quarter after six. We've been going for about an hour and 15 minutes. I usually keep these in an hour, but this was a special holiday edition where I wanted to bring you the viewers online and say thanks for being a follower um and happy holidays and here's to a fabulous 2019 and we will be doing Don't Forget the Critters next Sunday too. Um Laura yes Abby says hello. Uh tell Abby yeah he's he's right here he's listening Abby is the um cockatoo um that was a mutilator that needed to be moved ASAP to stop the hole in his chest and Shelly has done it. Um, I was going to end with something. What was it? Oh, well, whatever. Um, all right. Well, I just wanted to say um, happy holidays to everybody. Thank you for joining. We will be going live with Coffee with the Critters next week. 
um, at a regular scheduled time, nine in the morning. Um, don't forget about the projects or the memberships for those on your holiday list. They're pretty, they're pretty um, effective. Okay. All right, Shelly, Katie, thank you both so much. And Bye. Daphne, thank you. Bye, guys. <laughs> <There's your baby. laughs> All right, guys, have a great week. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.